This is Dr. Diane Norden with the Sheep and Goat Health Team. In this presentation, I will cover suggested activities and reporting requirements for the following three goals. Sheep and Goat Surveillance, Sheep and Goat Cervid and Equine Education and Outreach, and Sheep and Goat Cervid and Equine Preparedness and Response. Activities for Sheep and Goat Surveillance includes encouraging reporting, investigation, and sampling scrapie suspect sheep and goats, collecting all targeted animals, regardless of traceability, at regulatory scrapie slaughter surveillance sites, maintaining current and adding new RSSS collection sites, and increasing scrapie surveillance of sheep and goats from higher risk and underrepresented flocks or populations and higher risk animals such as mature found dead animals on, found on farm or at livestock markets. For regulatory scrapie slaughter surveillance, note that we are no longer targeting black faced sheep, Montadels, or South Down breeds of sheep. Targeted animals include all sheep and goats ages two, three, four, and five years of age based on dentition, regardless of traceability, and any mature animal that dies prior to slaughter or is condemned on animortem inspection is non-ambulatory, exhibits central nervous system signs, or exhibits intense rubbing, abrasions, or rough, thickened, or hyperpigmented skin. Additional activities for sheep and goat surveillance includes conducting surveillance to meet or exceed the state of origin-based surveillance annual sampling minimums for sheep and goats. States that do not meet their FY22 sampling minimums will need to have decreased their sampling deficiency by 50% as compared to FY2021, or demonstrate that a significant effort was made to meet the minimums to maintain consistent state status. Cooperative agreement funding can be used to pay state personnel salaries to collect and submit samples, or pay slaughter plants to Option one, submit whole heads to Remington or other centralized collection sites. Option number two, to store whole heads for subsequent collection and submission by state employees off-site. Option number three, to remove whole heads for state employees to collect and submit. And option number four, the plant collects and submits tissues. Templates exist for the sampling agreements and for statements of work for each of the four options listed. See links in your cooperative agreement guide. Guidelines for allowable costs can also be found in the comments of the SOW templates. Note that templates are written for agreements with USDA and will need to be modified for cooperator use. It is preferred that USDA enter into agreements with the slaughter plants, but note that with options number two and three, there can still be state involvement in sample collection. Sheep and goat surveillance can also be increased by collecting on-farm necropsy samples. These can be collected and submitted from scrapie suspects or age-eligible found dead animals on-farm, at livestock markets, or other sites. Alternatively, one could give Remington shipping boxes to producers or market personnel to ship heads from, found, from adult found dead animals to Remington, Indiana. Note that a statement of work template is available for markets to compensate them for efforts in assisting with live animal sampling and necropsy submissions of dead or euthanized sheep and goats. Surveillance samples can also be collected from live animals. For on-farm live animal testing, one could, do, one could collect rectal biopsies of producer animals or animals at markets. And this is for states that are struggling to meet their minimums. For sheep, we recommend concurrent collection of samples for genotyping and rectal biopsy. Um, and then the, the biopsies are submitted to NVSL once the genotype results are known. NVSL will only test the scrapie susceptible animals, but all animals that are genotyped will count towards a state's minimums. For goats, only rectal biopsy, rectal biopsies need to be collected. No genotyping is done for, for goats. Note that for all scrapie surveillance activities, USDA will pay for the boxes, the shipment of boxes, and laboratory costs through existing contracts. Most collection supplies can be can obtained through NVSL and shouldn't be included in cooperative agreement costs. Non-RSSS and, and RSSS activity surveillance reporting templates are available in your recipient's guide. 
Remember, only those activities that are funded through the cooperative agreement should be included in these reports. Reports are due quarterly as part of the cooperative agreement quarterly report. For non-RSSS activities include the number of suspect sheep and goats investigated, the number of sheep, sheep or goats sampled, the number of flocks sampled, the number of flocks genotyped to identify animals for live animal testing, and the number of positive flocks identified. For RSSS surveillance reporting, include the number of animals sampled, the number of samples entered, entered into BSLS, the number of positive flocks identified, and the number of RSSS and potential RSSS sites that were visited for purpose other than sample collection um, to support collection activities. Also include the new RSSS sites added, the number of those. Activities for sheep, goat, cervid, and equine education and outreach include using education and outreach to, in, to increase and monitor ID and record keeping compliance for sheep and goats, for reporting and submission of animals with clinical signs, such as CWD, scrapie, foreign animal diseases, and high impact emerging diseases that are found in sheep, goat, cervid, and equids, to encourage submission of found dead mature sheep for scrapie testing, and to increase producer awareness of how to use genotyping and other strategies to prevent scrapie introduction. Specific activities could include development and distribution of pamphlets, newsletters, or signage for markets, or for attendance at producer meetings. For sheep and goat cervid and equine outreach and reporting, outreach and education reporting, um, include the following if a presentation was made. Provide a description of the outreach or education activity or meeting and include the description of the audience, the numbers of people reached, description of education, educational materials, the method of outreach, a copy of the materials created, and the name of the meeting, its location, and organization holding the meeting. If no presentation was made, provide the name and organization providing the training or meeting, the purpose of the meeting, the attendee, their name and job title, the location of the meeting or training, the outcome, and the agenda if available. For the sheep and goat cervid and equine preparedness and response objectives, activities could include conducting disease response activities, increasing the number of flocks in the database, and the percentage of those that use official identification, and to monitor and enforce ID and record keeping compliance at concentration points. Remember that cooperative agreement funding should not be used to purchase official tags for taggers. For sheep and goat cervid and equine preparedness and response reporting, note that a template is available in your recipient's guide for reporting disease response activities. Simply report the disease of interest and the activity that was performed. Templates for ID compliance reports are also available from your program manager. If the cooperator does not do all the inspections at a given concentration point, each column of the report is to represent an individual inspection completed by the cooperator. However, if the cooperator does do all the inspections at a given concentration point, each column of the report represents the total number of animals inspected for a given concentration point for the reporting period. If you have questions on how to complete these reports, please contact me or Dr. Gazer.